Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video, we are going to take a close look at the new Super Console. This is the Super Console X, the thin series mini PC, or better known as the Super Console T4 Pro or Pro T4. So this thing is more like a kit that you're going to get. And inside the kit, we're going to get ourselves the mini PC. We're going to get ourselves a hard drive. So some of these mini PCs will have like a built-in hard drive. This is not the case because this thing doesn't support a built-in hard drive. Then we do get so two controllers. We're going to get my favorite ones. I personally really love these. I also did a separate video about it. These are like the special Batop Bat 2 controllers. You also have the wireless version if you can still find it on AliExpress. But this is the wired edition. They are very comfortable. I'm going to, go to talk about it later. I also have a built-in turbo function. The hard drive is basically a Bodicera hard drive or better said an image of Bodicera flashed into an hard drive. This is a 2 terabyte. you're also going to get a 500 gigabyte. It comes with the cable that we're going to need, a very short one. An explanation how you need to set it up. Sometimes if you're going to plug it in, it still not boots up so you need to configure it into the USB mode. So it boots up the hard drive. This is the 2 terabyte edition. Question is, of course, what are we going to get with something like this? And again, like you can just make it yourself, get a bottle here image, slap it on the hard drive, and you basically have the same result. The Thin T Series Mini PC. It's not like the most powerful version, this T4 Pro, but the question remains: what can we play with it? So basically you can make this thing yourself. It's from the brand B-Link. You can buy this thing for way cheaper. But this is more like an all-including kit with a hard drive with two controllers and the machine itself. So the Thin T Series Mini PC T4 Pro is more like one of those things you can buy. So let's talk about the specification list. So it comes with the Intel Apollo Lake processor, 4GB of memory, 64GB of storage, but we're not going to use it, it's only if you're going to use Windows. And then we do have like the option for LAN function, and of course it comes with a power supply. Later on we'll take a close look at more specifications, and do like an in-depth what it can do and what can we play. So let's do a quick unboxing. So inside the box we're just going to get ourselves the power supply, the user manual, more explaining how the system itself works, but that is not necessary because we're going to use it with Bodicera and then we have like the system itself. But let's take a close look at the system itself. What can we do with it? So first of all, like we do get like a lot of connection on the device. Here you can see like the on and off switch is at the front. We do get an audio jack and two USB 3.0 ports. Very convenient if you want to use the controllers. So at the right side, we're going to get another USB to port 3.0. We're not going to get one on the left side because the fourth controller port or the USB port is basically at the back over here. Input for the power supply, two USB connections and an RG45 for connecting the internet. So when you're looking at the overall quality, it feels quite heavy. But when overall, like there were a lot of plastic parts in it. You can see like the top part is made from plastic. On the love switch over here. And the bottom part is made out of metal. So when you do a quick comparison with the Android box, for example, we have like the GTK Pro over here. You can see this, the Pro version is even bigger. So this tiny, <laughs> say Intel, like say mini PC is quite compact. And yeah, just plug it in and let's see what we're going to get. So when you're looking at the new Super Console T4 Pro, or better said known as the B-Link, so basically this thing comes with Bottle Series 33 as an on the external hard drive and Windows 10 built in. The CPU is an Apollo Lake processor, an N3350 with an Intel GPU built in, that is Intel HD Graphics 500 running on 650 MHz, 4GB LPDDR3 that runs on 1600 MHz. So in overall, the specifications are not like superb, but that's what you're going to get with a cheaper PC. But the unfortunate thing is that we always need to like go into the freaking BIOS file. The manual that brings with it is absolutely amazing, but I already knew personally what you needed to do. But what you do need to do, I'm powering on pressing the Dell on a keyboard. So you need to have a keyboard laying around. And when getting into the BIOS, we need to set it up. So let's do that first, otherwise it will not boot up into the freaking hard drive. Let's give you a quick sample how you need to set it up. So this time it's going to be easy. At the top you see boot over here. With the boot you can see over there, I have like different boot options. So here we can see over here it has been set to the boot manager. There needs to be the USB device in this case. So now it automatically will boot up into the USB, CD, SD, and then will be Windows. You can put Windows in second if you want to, but I'm going to leave it like this. Save, discard, not di discard changes, need to save changes and exit, and then it needs to be set up and it will boot up into Bottle Sierra. But if that didn't work, the next thing they need to do, go to security. 
in this case we're going to secure boot and here we see like attempt secure boot enabled we need to disable this because this will give you a problem if it not like recognize the disk and it doesn't really want to boot up anyway so still usb drive have been set up over here so let's try to reboot it again save changes and let's see if it will boot up now with Battlesera, you can play so many cool things, but I'm curious about a couple of things. For example, at Thomas Wave, how will this run on a cheap, let's say, mini PC? But we're also going to try out some other devices. Think about PlayStation 2, GameCube, how will this run? Because when you're looking at, let's say, other devices we have seen in the past, when it comes to Android-based, we do have, like, so many awesome things that we can play. But maybe this thing can push a little bit further when it comes to N64 and some other devices we have some problems with. So that we're going to try and also going to mainly focus on. So for the first test we're going to play some Cruise in the USA. Okay, that's kind of weird. Everything is messed up when it comes to controls. They're configuring the right joystick. Wow. Okay, that's new. So with the Android box we also have some issues, especially when we're going to get into the game. We did have some hiccup there. Ah, there it is. We need to find the button. But the overall performance is way better than what I've seen before with the Android boxes. But we still do have some hiccups here and there. It can be a problem with the emulator itself, but let's try a different game. Another game that's quite difficult to emulate on those cheap Android boxes is GoldenEye. But the performance is way better than we have seen with your typical Android boxes. So it is promising. So let's dive into the GameCube, and of course F-Zero GX is a very demanding game. But I just wanted to see how far we can push this. But I'm not surprised that it runs pretty damn bad, simply because this is a quite demanding game, and normally we do have like a very busy PC needed for getting some okay performance. When you're getting into the game you can see it's playable, but you will have some hiccups here and there. But I just want to get in the most demanding game. Just a benchmark, GameCube. So GameCube, mm, it will be a hit or miss. I just wanted to boot up some Wii games just to do a benchmark, but unfortunate, we do get this error a lot. And this is the thing I just want to point out, that we do have like a lot of stuff that doesn't work. I really freaking hate it. All right, so next up, let's try some Sega Dreamcast. I must say that we do have like a lot of bugs nowadays that can run this very well. We do get slightly better performance with these PCs. Maybe we can even crank it up a little bit in the scaling when it comes to resolution, also the bending, what kind of emulator they're using. We did get like a minor hiccup over there, but it is more like a problem with the emulator. Okay, so let's go back into the 90s with some Sega Genesis. Already mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is not really demanding, but it is a lot of fun to play sometimes. Okay, let's get into the Sega Naomi, just to see how that runs. But it will be the same story like with the Sega Dreamcast. Great performance. Absolutely amazing games to play. And they run very well, as you can see over here. Let's get into the Sega Saturn, but we do noticing like a lot of stuttering. And we do get like a very bad performance over here. A little bit of a bummer. And that's the thing that we're going to get with these boxes. It can be hit or miss, but also like, it can be maybe like an, an configuration problem. But the reason I'm showing you it like this, because that is what happens all the freaking time. You slap something like say into a machine like this, or you're basically adding through the USB, and see it doesn't even work out of the box. And that's quite frustrating sometimes. So let's see if we can fix it. Let's press the B and hold it. Because we're going to get into the options and choose advanced game options over here. So here you can see like the emulator has been set to auto and I want to set it here to Yaba Shinshiro. Let's select that one. Yep, let's go back. And let's set it 
with this emulator and let's boot it up again. Okay, we do get like a little bit better performance. We can still hear the stuttering in the audio, but you can basically switch between the emulators just to see if we're going to get better performance with the box. Take consideration, it's still not a super powerful box, so we do have like some limitations. But it is slightly better than we had before. Oh, that sound. <laughs> I just want to implement like some PlayStation gameplay in this video, but I just noticed something I need to show you. I'm pressing basically the B button for activating the game. And this is something that happens always like a lot. So sometimes it doesn't even boot up the game. That's something you need to take consideration. So where we had like so many issues back in the day with PlayStation 1, we do have so many devices now that we can actually play it without any hassle. But do you need to buy an expensive box for playing PlayStation 1? I think really not, because there are so many cheap devices out there that actually plays very well. Of course, with more power, we can play it on higher resolutions. That's something you take consideration. All right, so next up, let's try some PlayStation 2. And here you also can see that it will push this thing to the limit. Slow motion PlayStation 2. That's actually what it is. So yeah, that's a little bit of a bummer. There was nothing to do about it. And yep. Okay, so next up, a system that will run way better than on your typical Android box is a PlayStation Portable. You're not going to get like superb performance, but it is way better. Of course, we do have like a hiccup here and there, but it's more like a compatibility issue with the game or the emulator. But you do have like finally some wipe up that you can actually play. This reminds me of my last few dates. Okay, so next up I wanted to try some Panasonic. Panasonic is a quite difficult system to emulate, especially with these cheap boxes, but there are actually some games that can play on this, so I think it's pretty cool. Oh yeah, that worked great. But Adorama's Wave is a system that do have like a hit and miss when it comes to the cheap Android boxes. But with PC, you can see that we do have like amazing performance. Personally, I really don't test Nintendo DS that much. Uh, the reason why is because I don't really love to play it like this. Of course, it's more like a personal thing, but I wanted to show you that with the overall performance, it's like very choppy. You can hear the music starters. The gameplay itself is not super bad, but you can switch it if you want to. That is one of the options you're getting. Oh crap! But personally, I don't find it a really pleasant experience. <laughs> 